Alright everybody, welcome back to the channel. If you're just joining in either way, thank you for watching. Uh, we're working on the garden today, planting stuff up and uh, come down to get a little bit of dirt. This is my compost pile. Kind of an experiment that we started last year. And uh, come get a little bit of dirt and I got a little bit of a secret weapon right down over there. We're going to be getting a bucket of that too. This is what it looks like down inside of here. As soon as you get to digging into it. Still got a lot of organic material into it. I think it'll be pretty good. Experiments with not quite the right equipment. Oh yeah, we made it work though, wasn't it? There's all sorts of good stuff in there. And once we put that in the ground, that's just gonna continue to work its magic. What are you doing? We need that bucket. Oh, you just hit. All right, well, you guys seen enough of this. On to the next step. Okay, so right here is secret weapon number two. Uh, this is a pile of dairy farm cow poop that I got from a friend of mine that obviously has a dairy farm. No. <laughs> yeah, no. But it has slightly composted, which is kind of what I wanted it to do. So, that's secret number two. Moving on. Okay, so, this didn't just slightly compost. This is, this is dirt. Like, this is no longer cow poop. It smells, it smells like some of the best dirt you could, I don't know, it smells and feels the moisture that it's holding. <coughs> smells like absolutely no, no cow poop. Moving on. Oh no. Oh no. Alright, we're back here at the garden. Wanted to talk about a couple of things we're doing with the garden. Um, we usually lay plastic over the whole thing. Last year when we bought plastic, it fell apart in one year. It used to last us three or four years. Um, that's a piece that I took off after three years and we're just we're using it again because I'm sure it'll last longer than the stuff that we bought last year um, We are gonna have to get another piece to put here because I like to put the melons on plastic You don't have to come and roll them over to keep them from rotting out that way and the weeds can't grow. It's just nicer um, So basically we got four hills on that piece of plastic There will be at least two watermelons and two musk melon and then uh, here we'll have pumpkins um, for my daughters and then um, a couple of different types of squash butternut and buttercup are the two that I like the best but then we usually try a different kind every year just to see how we like them uh, we did summer squash last year and they were I don't know they're more like a zucchini than a squash and I don't I don't think we'll be planting those again so um, anyway uh, Instead of using plastic this year where we plant the tomatoes and the peppers and everything else, um, we got some straw from my brother and uh, we're going to spread that out real thick. If we need more, we can go get it. Um, so I guess secret weapon number three and four. We already seen one and two. I'm coming. Look at some of the stuff that we got here. This is generally where like the bigger companies would come through with their sifting machine. Um, they probably would have got it a little bit better than this. There wouldn't be as much organic material left in it. But they'd, they'd sift it and uh, then they'd run all of this stuff back through processing into the next pile then. So, however, um, this, I'm really happy with this. This is gonna hold a lot of moisture under there uh, when we dig it out. You guys will see what we do with it. 
Uh, that's going to hold a lot of moisture for the plant where we need it to be. Uh, this here, like I said, this is the cow poop. Well, it used to be cow poop. I mean, it doesn't. This is fully composted, and I don't think you could get better dirt. I don't think you could buy better dirt at this point. Uh, so, I've got one more weapon. Well, I got a couple. Here's here's number one helper. Number two helper is somewhere trying to get shovels and stuff. Um, I have one more secret weapon right down here. I'll bring you down over there. And we'll talk about that. All right. So here's the last ingredient. This is chicken poop. Um, it was actually dried chicken poop that I put here, uh, uncovered to get wet and kind of do some slight composting itself. Um, I really highly doubt that this is fully composted. Nope, definitely not. See, so this, this is our everything. Uh, that's, that's food for the plants. Um, it's nasty. It's a terrible job. But it's totally worth it. Uh, we did find out that it is very easy to go overboard with this stuff. Uh, chicken poop is very powerful. Um, if you are going to be using chicken poop, be very careful. Uh, small amounts go very long ways. And uh, as far as pepper plants go, just don't, don't, don't do that. So, moving on. We got everything together. I'm going to get you guys up on some time lapse. Um, here, where are they? They're over here. Here's some of the plants. They, uh, a couple of them need some water, but they're getting ready to go into the ground, so they'll perk right up. Uh, these here, this was about the extent of the frost damage that we had. Um, yeah, can't, yeah, anyway, long story, this one got left outside, the other ones got brought in, and we, we screwed up, we left that one out, but they're just fine. Uh, we don't have everything that we're going to be planting yet, we still got to make a trip to get it, but we're going to get this garden prepped up and move along, I'll get you set up. Okay, so we need to go get a few more bales. Uh, this here is going to be potatoes, so I didn't cover that yet purposely. So, I'll say probably two more bales to do it. We'll get three just to be in case. Coming to get a few more straw bales. Stash. Farmer Pete, if you catch this one, you might appreciate this. different sieves and stuff for it. So we got all these holes dug, and uh, he's dumping poop in the bottom of them. Hmm. Basically, that's that chicken poop that's mixed up with water. 
got way too much, so it'll end up What's getting dumped. Count? So, that's the first step. All right. So now that we got all the holes dug and our mixture of chicken poop and water in there, I'm just gonna take and flood each one of these holes. I don't know if I ever get water. There we go. So I got all the holes filled up with water. Wait about 15, 20 minutes, and then we'll start planting. Just waiting for them to drain down. All right, so while we were waiting for them to soak in, we laid everything out. I wanted to point out a couple of things. Um, we're not gonna do it with all of them because we got way too many tomatoes as it is, but we got an extra hole over here. Um, a lot of people just kill one of these off, but if you just break these, hold the camera, huh? Oh, down here. Both of these will do great. Probably a 99% survival rate when I do that. So, another little tidbit. Moving on. Alright, so now we're putting some of the compost inside of the holes. Hey, there's another one! And my daughters are finding... Oh. Never oh, mind. Never mind, but she found a grub. I did. And um, that's a good thing. That means that that's good dirt. Stuff can live in it. We didn't ruin it anyway. It may not be perfect, but I'm pretty happy with it. So this stuff has some moisture in, in it yet. There's still some water. So you see, this is gonna work in and they'll have to get a little bit more in once we work it in. But then that's gonna be mostly the planting bed. And then we'll have to get a little bit more of this. And uh, as we dig it out, then uh, we'll fill in around the plant with that. So. Went got some more compost. Look at this stuff. Got a little bit of it that didn't. This stuff worked, was really nice. Went a little bit deeper into the pile. This over here is mostly that pile of dairy poop. This over here is all that compost that we did. Looking good.
All right, so now we're in the planting process. We've got our compost that we made down in the hole. All right, dump it right in there. That's the the cow poop compost. Give me more than that, honey. Yeah. It's just a little bucket bag. I, I understand. It's hard to get a big scoop, huh? There you go. All right. Kind of hard to do it right with holding the phone, but. No, we don't need any more in this one. Save it for the next one. All right. And then we just take and put a can around them. That's okay. Uh, for a couple reasons. The biggest reason is the rabbits, for some reason, will not mess with them when the can's around them. And then, uh, usually it's for the, your smaller plants, the wind doesn't blow them around. And it gets pretty windy here, so this helps them to, to uh, not fall down. Yep, and not break off while they get acclimated being out in the weather and get their stalks stronger. So, uh, but the biggest thing about these cans is it keeps the rodents away from them for whatever reason. They don't like these cans at all. So, we're gonna keep planting. You guys are on time lapse up there. So we got 13 peppers to plant. 
Yeah, they're going to be going here. They don't need as much space as the tomatoes do. Just plant the last five tomatoes. I got to get to digging holes. Here we are planting potatoes. Um, hello. Hello. That's my friend. Okay, so basically these are just house pot potatoes that we have bought and didn't get eaten. Where's the eye? Oh, does is there an eye on it? Yeah, wait though. Right there. My eye is right here. Plant the eye up. Don't have to plant them very deep. <laughs> that one's a big one. I need to plant it deep. deep. Get it. Uh, put it over here more. Okay. Like, wait, huh? Yep. Really <laughs> Sweet potatoes and calaravas. Still have the melons. We got the plastic down. Got everything laid out where it's got to go. We still got to go through the same process with these, but uh, everything else is planted. Oh, my herbs for making spaghetti and stuff so I do with a lot of the tomatoes is can well we freeze it freeze spaghetti chili sauce tomato juice stewed tomato stuff of that nature <laughs> so what do we plan anyway well, we got some red potatoes and some uh, dull Idaho potatoes <laughs> uh, picked up a few more tomato plants, tomatello, uh, cauliflower, some eggplants. Got some people that really enjoy eggplants. I'd be partial on them. Uh, everything's looking good. Uh, we got, like I said, um, leave all the cans on it so that the rabbits don't mess with them mainly and protect them from the wind while they're little here. Uh, we got tomato cages on it. We still got to put our uh, straw down on top of that. All right, we're all finished up. Uh, to recap, we did all this work. Uh, it's going to fertilize itself. We don't have to fertilize it. We don't have to weed it. Uh, no weeds here, minimal weeds there. Everything's going to hold moisture. The cans are going to keep the rodents away. Uh, the only thing we really need to worry about are bugs at this point and cultivating the two rows of sweet corn that we have there. Um, other than that, it's pretty much self taken care of. Uh, don't have to water it very often, having the plastic and uh, everything over it just holds the moisture. And like I said, our compost, I'm hoping, holds the moisture even better. So that's kind of new to us this year. Um, we'll see how it works. Uh, another thing I wanted to note if you guys are wanting to do something similar to this, um, in previous years, we always just bought Miracle Grow dirt. And we would dig out of there and put uh, in the holes. This this garden has grown vegetables for as long as I can remember. And uh, we gave it a break there for about three years. I grew it out in the sweet corn patch. Um, and now we're just coming back to it. And I don't want to just keep taking it out of the dirt. I want to actually kind of keep feeding it and um, keep it good soil so that we can continue to grow stuff. So. That's the goal behind it all. Like I said, hope everybody enjoyed this one. Um, still need to plant the peas and beans along the fence there. That's Bob's specialty. He, last year he talked me into doing that. So, <laughs> Like I said, thanks for watching. Hope to catch you on the next one.